How would you bring the seeds of the reef? Come on, you can do better than that. Somebody praise the Lord. said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad today? I said, are you glad today? Amen. I appreciate him, don't you? His goodness, I was just thinking about uh, talking about Gary, what Abraham said, or the angel said to Abraham, rather he said, and he was dealing with a, a dare situation. He was dealing with a hundred year old, a promise being made to Abraham and Sarah, and <clears throat> or to Abraham rather. Yeah. And he done got old, a hundred years old. And Sarah was 90. 90. I mean, to the normal way of speaking, the medical terms, you know, you're talking foolishness. But having those talking faith sometimes sounds foolish, but it ain't foolish. <laughs> and it don't sound foolish to somebody that believes God. It sounds very in line and very sane. Amen. Amen, brother. Abraham was a hundred and Sarah's about ninety. And he asked Abraham, said, Is that anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? You know, that's where faith gets off the main road. I said, that's where faith turns when it should stay on the road. Is there anything, see, in faith, that's where people's Faith come to, they come to where they no longer believe there's nothing too hard for the Lord. They believe God for some things, but not all the way. Yeah. It's like it's like going down to the creek. <clears throat> we used to go as little kids, slip off, and all the time we got caught, and that was bad. <laughs> Get wet, it's bad whooping, I tell you. Yes, sir. <laughs> wet clothes with a whooping is... <laughs> It's three times whooping with one. <laughs> but just getting down to the water, putting your toes in it, ain't getting wet. And that's where a lot of times our faith is. We just we just get anchored deep. It's wet our feet. Come on. Come on. And we believe God for a few little things, but once it gets over there, we panic. Come on. Gets up and lead deep. Come on, brother. It panic. Come on. We lose it. And when you lose it, you can't lose it and have faith too. I see it. You gotta stand still. That's what he told him. Pharaoh was coming yeah. with the dust of his mighty army. 
And the Red Sea was in the front of them. Boy, that's a, that's a panic mode position. I mean, that's, that's a position to panic. If there's any other, any time in life that you might panic, that would be a place of panic, wouldn't it? Pharaoh and his mighty army coming in behind you and the Red Sea in the front of you. Where are you going to go? <laughs> what are you going to do? But the Lord, and they started screaming and hollering. The Lord said, what are they doing hollering? Yeah. Tell them to stand still. Stand ye still. Stand ye still. Yes. Don't that tell you something today? Yes. Don't that tell you something that God ain't worried about what position you get in? Come on. Stand still. Don't that tell you that God is not worried of how dire the situation is? Come on. When he tells them, stand ye still. Maybe God will do something. That ain't what he said. Hope for God to do something. He said, stand ye still and see God do something. See the salvation. Salvation is deliverance. That's right. They needed deliverance. Come on now. I mean, there wasn't nothing going to save them but God's deliverance. Same thing for us. That's the same thing for us. We're in a time that takes God's deliverance to bring us out. Bring us through. Amen. Give me some regular water. This is cold. But if there's a dare situation, that was one. You think about Daniel. He got his back put to the wall in the dare situation. And they put the word out. And they trapped him. They thought he had him. Trap. And that's what the devil does. He tries to trap you, shove you out there, and make you doubt God. That's right. Fall off the edge yeah. and not believe God. And they, they set Daniel up. They set him up for failure. Yeah, but he didn't fail. And they, they, Daniel was the king's right hand man. And they got jealous of him. They said, look, we got to find somewhere to get Daniel. Got to find somewhere to get Daniel. Said, every time the king wants up, get Daniel. He can do it. Daniel, Daniel can interpret the dream. So they come up with a plan. And the plan was to get Daniel. They said, where we're getting, it's got to be something about his God. And so they come up with a plan that they would pass a law that nobody would pray for 30 days to God. That's right. And if they did, they was going to throw them into a den of hungry life. Yeah. Come on. Now that, that's, that's, that's another situation like facing the Red Sea of Pharaoh. What are you going to you're going to turn around and fight Pharaoh or you're going to fight the Red Sea and try to swim it. Yeah. You needed a, they needed a miracle. Yes. And there, there are times coming our life and more so in these last days, we just need a miracle. Yes. Yeah. We just, nobody knows what to do. They rush you to the doctor and he don't know. You still die. And ain't nothing can save you but a miracle. Yes, come on. And you know what? We serve a God of miracles, but a lot of times we doubt that He is. That's right. That's the truth. I mean, well, that, that's 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 what God is about. Miracles. Come on. Signs and wonders. Go back and read the history of God. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Come on. Amen. Amen. That's what He's about. And then he, he, he redeemed us, saved us, and sent Jesus to die on the cross and to be whipped at the whipping post to redeem us. Come on. Yes. 
Sin brings sickness. But he said, Jesus has the cure. He said, Jesus has the cure. The cure for sin and the cure for sickness. That's right. If I can't just believe, he said, all things are possible. Daniel, the law was passed. No, don't pray. They knew that Daniel was going to pray. They, they came up with something that they were almost sure that would work. That would flush Daniel out into the hands of them. Right. By law. Come on. And that's the way things are now. That's the way the law is set up now. To flush us out and let it be lawful. That's right. Come on. To stop us. Yes. Let it be lawful. Well, you can't preach about this. You can't preach about that. You know, there are a lot of laws already passed. That's right. They've got them on the books. And when they all get ready for this end time, they're going to flush us out. And then it'll be, it'll separate the men from the boys. Yeah. Come on. Who's going to stand up? Who's going to stand up like Paul? Come on. Get his head cut off. Who's going to stand up like Peter and get crucified upside down? Who's going to stand up like Jesus and die for the sins of the world? Hmm. It's like that. And that's the way it's always been. And those are prophets of old was persecuted. Right. Jeremiah was told in the sewer up to his neck. Yes. They were beaten, stoned, sawed asunder. Shipwreck. Paul was stoned and left for dead. They thought they killed him. I mean, they thought there's any life left in him. They hit him again. Yeah. yeah, that's right. They stoned him and left him for dead. And after they left, he got up. God just wasn't through with him. But Daniel, and that's the reason they passed that law for nobody to pray. Because they were pretty well sure when it comes Daniel's prayer time, he was going to pray. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank God for Daniel. Yeah. Thank God for Paul, men like Paul. Thank God for men like Jeremiah. Yes. Thank God that we can go back and read the Word of God, and we can find men that knew it was it was dangerous even to death for them to do what God called them to do, but yet they went on and done it in. You know what? That's what kept this word alive. That's right. Being led, willing to lay their life down for the truth. Right. Mm. To keep the truth alive. And you know what? You got many in this day and time is willing to be persecuted or hated to tell the truth. Right. To keep the truth alive. See, if, they, if the truth ain't kept alive, everything will fade. That's right. You know what God said about it? Yeah. And Isaiah, he said, if the Lord hadn't have left us a seed, meaning the word of God, we'd be made like Sodom and Gomorrah. In other words, that old homosexual spirit would take over everybody. Everybody, come on, preach. If there wasn't some kind of truth embedded in our mind, that it was wrong. Come on. You know that a lot of folks don't have that in their mind. What's in their mind? Well, let them do what they want to do. Yeah. So what? When God says it's an abomination, it's wrong. That's right. When God said it's wrong, it's wrong. And when men fall into it, it brings them to destruction. But you're blessed today to have it in your mind, drilled in your mind. You've got the seed of God in you. And the, the Spirit and the Word agrees. So the Spirit of God agrees with that word and it lets you know, it puts a knowledge in you not to cross that line. Come on. That's right. Ooh, all right. God, Crossing that line would cost your soul. Yes, it will. God hated it enough until he burned Sodom and Gomorrah, he didn't make Adam and Steve and made Adam and Eve. Come on. But to the world today, ain't nothing to it. It's become a normal thing. Yeah. The world has caved in. Yeah. 
Because one thing the pulpit has become silent. The pulpit has become silent. But you know, God always have a Jeremiah or a Paul somewhere to keep alive the word of God. Yes. To always stir people in the right direction. Thank you, Lord. To lift up the truth Amen. and to preach the truth. Come on. And to cry loud and spare not against evil. But stand up. Yes. But you know, Daniel, the Bible said knowing. Knowing. <coughs> What would happen if he did? And he wasn't dumb. He knew they had set him up. Yes, sir. But he had to make a choice. He knew he'd been set up. Yes, sir. But he had to make a choice. Yes. To stand for God or to bend to the devil. Mm. Stand for God or bend to the devil. To his enemies. That's right. You know, if the enemies, your enemies can never break you, they'll destroy you. Yes, if your enemies can never break you, they'll wipe you out. That's right. As long as you stand for the truth, you stand for God's word. As long as you've got this seed of God's word in your heart, there's no evil spirit can overrun the word of God when you believe it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And there's no evil demon, no evil spirit that's a loose in the world today that can overrun your mind. Yes. That's where the battleground is. Yes. That's where the fight is. Yes, sir. Yes. And the Bible said, Daniel know it. What the results was if they caught him praying now because they had made a law. Yeah. They made a law especially to break him. And there was a devil that set you up if you can. Yes, come on. And God would allow him to test you. It was a big test for Daniel. I said it was a big test for Daniel. Praise God. Daniel knowing that the law was passed. And that's what's backed a lot of folks down and made them shut up. Because they know they're law against you. Come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. I'm not too worried about man's law. Hey. So I worry about God's law. That's right. I, it. I fear him. Right. But I don't fear man. Right. The Bible said, don't fear man that can kill you. Come on. But said, I'll tell you one, you better fear. Fear God after he kills you. Yes. He cast your soul into hell. Yes. See, people don't preach that kind of God. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible said he was. It said, fear, not just fear man that can just kill you. But see, man can't go no farther than that. He can't take. Put your soul where he wants. That's right. Man, there'd be a bunch of us lost in hell if somebody could have sent you there. Yeah. There'd be folks mad enough at you and me both to send us to hell a dozen times. That's right, come on. Go ahead. We'd be lost forever. But ain't you glad that man don't have that power? Hey. Ain't you glad that man don't have that authority to send your soul to hell? God alone. Somebody get mad at you, they tell you to go there, don't you? Go. Go. Quick. They tell you where to go. Come on now. So quick. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's a bad that's a bad deal, isn't it? Sending somebody to hell in your heart. Yes, Lord. That's a bad deal. Hey, come on. You just come to think of it. Sending somebody, and you're a lot of folks. You say it out of the mouth, but to say it in the heart. Uh -huh. That's yeah. right. You're right. Whole cuss in the heart. That's in it. In the mind. Go ahead. Come on. Hey. It's the truth. 
But to send somebody to hell on your own just because you're mad at them ain't no mercy at all. That's right. That's right. Man, you send somebody to hell if you had that authority, you could never get out. That was to be eternal punishment from a man. And God ain't give man that kind of authority. That's right. When man has that kind of feeling, God shows you love and mercy. Yes. Come to me. I'll forgive you. Yes. Yes, sir. And he teaches us to forgive one another and love one another. Yes. And he put it this way. He put it even stronger. When you stand praying, if you have all your heart against your brother, forgive that your heavenly father might forgive you. That's it. That's it. He put it in place until if we won't forgive our brother, God said, I'm holding yours up. God said, I'm holding up your forgiveness until you can forgive your brother. He's got it fixed where we can't get off with ours. I said he's got us he's got it fixed where we can't get away. We're not forgiven. Amen. In other words, go to God and get forgiveness, but yet won't forgive one another. Come on. That's the truth. God fixed it where it won't work. That's right. You gotta first forgive to get forgiven. That's right. When you stand praying, if you have all in your heart, forget you come to ask God for help. Save your children, or, or, or you need something in your life. You need God said, "Okay, forgive them. Yes. Don't come back and ask me for nothing until you can forgive your brother. That's right. Yeah. Don't come back and pray and ask me for nothing until you can forgive. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's the fact. Of it. I mean, yes, we may not want it that straight. That's right. But yes. I mean, there ain't one way for something to be written. That's right. <laughs> and if we can read. And that's the way we read the Bible. God is saying, you must forgive if you want me to forgive you. Yes. That's right. That's the truth. See, God ain't going to let us be a winner over our brother and hold something over him and still get forgiveness and freedom from God. Come on. See, that's what frees you. What frees you is forgiven in your own heart. That releases. It releases that hardness. Come on. Let it go. Pray until you can. Oh, yeah, it's not bad with things. I'm bad with things. I've come to the altar and left with it more than once. Come on. Y'all have to. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come to the altar and didn't really want it to give it up. Come on. Didn't want to let it go. You, you really didn't. You come and went to the act of forgiveness. Right. But you really didn't want God help to forgive. Ooh, man. And you know what you did? You went and sat back down with the same old unforgiveness and the same old hardness you had when you came. God's just right, he's pure, and he's holy. He's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. And he has no respect to person. He is. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. He has no respect to person. You can't buddy up to God and turn him against your brother. Uh, uh, tell him how bad sister so-and-so is and turn God. Some folks actually are. Now through the years look like they believed that. They believed that they could actually make God kill somebody. That's the wrong spirit in the beginning. That ain't even the spirit of God. That spirit didn't come from God. Come on. And I've seen many people use the word of God against one another. Those scriptures. Now that's a dangerous thing. The Bible says the letter killed. <laughs> but the spirit maketh a lie. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish.
Christ, but how everlasting. For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be. You know what? To God, first of all, up front, more than anything else, it's love. Yes. He said you can give your body to be burned. Give all your groceries. You didn't give your car. Give your shoes and clothes. But said if you have enough charity. If you don't profit you one thing what you've done. There's no blessing in it. If you don't do it by and through the love of God. Because you love them. You're not trying to outdo somebody. You're not trying to outgive somebody. Jesus took that little woman. That's when they were all dropping the money in, yeah. probably no doubt some of them was dropping it in, letting it way through there, you know, where everybody could see it. That little woman coming over them little two pennies and just gave it. He stopped and said, wait, hold. And I'm sure the rest of them didn't like that one bit. Especially if they was given in the wrong spirit. Come on. Somebody was given in the right spirit. I mean, he wouldn't bother them because they're giving out of love. Come on. And that's the way we should give. Yeah. He <coughs> said, this little woman has given more than all y'all. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it, they got hot around the collar. Amen. Them that was given to be seen got hot around the collar. Yeah, come on. said, she gave more than all y'all because she gave out of her need. She needed what she gave, but she gave it because she loved. Yes, yes. Yes, She gave because she loved. Yes, Lord. Yes. She gave out of her purity, out of her need. Yes. She needed this herself. And said, you know what? She's given more than all of y'all. God honored her giving above everybody else. She gave it with love. Mm-hmm. If you don't give with love, because you love God. That's right. If you give any other reason, That's right. it's the wrong reason. The truth. We give because we love God. We love His Word. We love His truth. We want to see somebody else help. Amen. And we're doing everything we can do. Come on. Through any means to reach it. But he spoke of all the things. But above all, is charity. <coughs> charity is love manifest. Right. Charity is love manifest. Right. It's the love of God manifested through you. That's right. And that's what Jesus is all about, folks. That's right. That's the truth. You know, you 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 be up here. Seeking for this big ministry and power. But yet if you ain't got the love of God, <laughs> you'll never make it. That's right. You know, it operates. It's the uh, the gifts operates. Everything that God does operates by and through love. Yes, yes, so yes, you you got to have the right spirit yes, to do it. Yes, yes. Yes, amen. Yes. And no doubt, in my mind today, that's one reason a lot of things is with, with help. From us. Yes, that's right. Because that old man, that old flesh just don't want to let go yeah, right. and do right. That's, that's right. right. Come on. Yeah. Have you ever just seen just had a child sort of just stubborn? Just nothing you've done. Just plain stubborn? Yeah. Uh, Come on. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Just plain stubborn. That old will of that old flesh. That old man is just plain stubborn when it comes to the will of God. He has to be broken. He has to be crucified. And you know what Paul said in Romans 6? He that's dead is ceased from sin. He's letting us know until you die, you're going to keep sin in some kind of way. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I love this that's the word. That's the word. Yeah. We're trying to reach. It. We're trying to reach. It. Yeah. We're trying to reach God. We're trying to get to that place in God, and there ain't nothing going to get us there but the roadmap. Yeah. The roadmap is the Bible, 
And I ain't seeking no position. I ain't seeking nothing you got. I'm just seeking to preach the word and finish my course and run my race. Amen. Obey God and hear Him say, well done and try to take everybody I can with me. That is the truth. Amen, brother. Yes, Amen. Yes, God. Yes. Come on. But Paul said in Romans, he that's dead is ceased. Let me see. He's talking about that old man. As long as he's alive, kicking, and well, he's going to stick his head up yes. and say something yes. he shouldn't say. Yes. He's going to think something that's evil. Come on. Every time. Always. He's going to think something that's evil. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, continually, he's striving yes. to yes. take over your life. Yes. yes. The old carnal man. That's why Paul said to be carnal minded is death. That's right. That's, 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 that's a hard scripture. Yes, it is. To be carnal minded is boom. <laughs> death will take you to hell. Come on, Brother Reed. Sounds like it is. To be carnal minded is death. We have to seek. But he, listen to what he said. But to be spiritual minded yeah. is hey. life and peace. Oh, that's right. Life and peace. We got to work on this old man. That's right. It ain't about religion. It ain't about joining some church. It's about being really saved and hungry for God. Yes. Seeking after God. Reading His Word and praying and asking God for His help and His strength every day. You have got to have that personal relationship with Jesus. It ain't a crowd thing. Yeah. Even though we gather together and worship God, when it comes down to it, when you're alone at night yeah. in that room, you look at that roof, you need a relationship. Yeah. You need to be able to talk to God and hear Him talk back to you and comfort you. If it's just something when you come to church, when you go home, you ain't got nothing. Come on. Yes. <coughs> it's about the way it is. Come on. Just come to church, sing a few songs, go to the house, live a carnal, word of life. Do what everybody else is doing. No, when you're born again, that means you got a new life. Did you know that? That's right. That's what he meant, being born again. Yes. That's a total recreation. Amen. Yes. When you're born again, you're recreated in Christ Jesus. Yeah. See, from that point on, you grow up into his likeness. Right. We strive to enter in no. at that straight gate. My God, my God, mm. that's the truth. That's why and I hate to say some things, but it's right to say. That's right. Come on. That's why long ago, and y'all know I'm telling the truth, when folks got saved, there's such a difference. Yeah. Now right. it ain't like that. That's right. That's right. When folks got saved, Sister Jody, I mean, they were so different to the world and everybody around them. No, their life testified of the change. That's right. right. Worse now, it's like folks, everything is let down so and meddled out so until the church has got it fixed where you don't have to rouse nobody's thoughts. You just uh, come to church and pay your time. You just mingle right on in. Right on in. You don't That's disturb it. nothing. You ain't done disturb. That's right. We're supposed to disturb. Hey. And I left hey. church that morning, went to work, and I started an uproar. Hey, hey. The same day I got saved. I wasn't trying to. But the difference that being saved took in my life made it so noticeable until they began to question me. What is wrong with you? That's right. Mm. Sorry. What is wrong with you? And I got saved in the Baptist church. Good morning. And you preaching it. <laughs> I got saved in the Baptist church. Glory. And I went on eating this year. Come on. Yeah. I 
which part and I was and I just noticed it kept peeping around the corner. They didn't think I saw them. <laughs> See, they wanted that they wanted old me. Uh, old me had just died. Hey, so, hey, preach it, brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been born again. God had just given me a new life. Woo! And they all kept peeping and peeping, looking. Because I was the life of the ship. I kept something going, pulling something on somebody. Kept it alive, made the, made the night go fast. They, 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 they was carnally, so they was lost without that. Yeah. That's just like when I was a sinner, I went to club and it was dead, I went to me another. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> Come on, Ram. Because I wanted life. Come on. And I wanted to waste my time, I go home to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they kept peeping and looking. After a while, one of them got brave enough to come over and said, Reed, what's wrong? I said, I got saved today. He said, oh. Hey. 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 Hallelujah. Hey. I got saved. I got saved. My life changed. Hallelujah, Jesus. I quit going to the places I used to go. Quit doing the things I used to do. Praise God. I was born again. Hallelujah. There was something happening in me. There was a new birth. There was a new life. A new seed. The seed of God. His word fell in my heart. I was born again. Not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible. And it still lives and abides today. What I got that day on May the 9th, 71. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I said I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. It's real. Come on. It's real. It was preached what salvation would do to you. But now it's so meddled down. And, uh, uh, anybody want to join the church? And it's so quiet. Not come to this altar. Repent. Yes. Come and kneel and give your life to God. Let him wash you in the blood of the Lamb. All this is meddled out. Yeah. But it's still real. God's going to still have a people. Yes, and this old crop has died out. But I'm telling you, there's a new crop coming in. And it ain't coming in under the old spirit. Amen. It's coming in after the Holy Ghost. The power of God's going to draw them in. It's going to be the dawning of a new day. Hallelujah. Come on. And when God does something, He does it original, not according to man's way, yeah. but according to His word. His word, that's right. And that's what folks are hungry His for. Word. The truth, whether you know it or not, the real people is hungry. They are hungry for the truth because nothing will satisfy them in the heart. Nothing will do what needs to be done inside of their life but the plain truth. See, when folks are bound wide open in the world, what it takes is what God planned in the beginning. Yes. What he did through Jesus at the cross. That's what it takes. Yes. Don't add nothing to it. Don't take nothing away. Yes. He said, you must be born again. Yes. Lord, how can I? Nicodemus said, how can I go back to my mother's womb? The second time, he said, Bob or not, I said, no, you must be born again of the spirit and the water. And you can't see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. 
Praise God. You must be born again. You know, it's not even expressed anymore about you. But you've got to be born again. You've got to see when you're born again, that's that God's recreation. We're born of the seed of the Word of God. And you take off that old man. And you put on that new man. And he said that new man, which is after God, created in righteousness and true holiness. Put off the old man, put on the new man, which after God is created. See, he's telling us the new man is created after God. Come on. Adam and Eve, Eve lost it in the garden. God formed Adam from the dust of the earth. Breathe the breath into his life and his nose. He became a living soul. He made all the animals made them. And Adam named them. But God saw that, that, that Adam, he said, it's not good for man to be alone. And he saw there wasn't a help me. Yeah. Or it's good for him. So he put, put him into deep sleep. We stand got a reel out of his side. Yeah. And it made Eve. He made woman. He said, now she's born of your bone. Flesh of your flesh. Yeah. See, that, that's the way God made this thing. It ain't this old transgender spirit and soul. Oh, woman with woman and man with man. Yeah. God put a, Adam, this is God's plan. That's right. This stuff is against God's law. And yes, plan. sir, it is. Yes, sir. He put Adam into her deep sleep, took a rib out of his side, and made the woman. He said, now she's bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. That's it. For this cause shall a man leave mother and father, cleave to his wife, and there should be no more twain but one flesh. Yes, sir, that's the word. She shall be called woman because she came from man. That's right. He took the rib out of man's side and made her. I reckon he breathed the breath of life in her like he did Adam, but he, unless Adam, all, all, Adam's breath was already in the rib, he didn't have to breathe. He don't say. But anyhow, he did it right. That's right. Well, the way it happened, he did it right. That's right. Yes. And there's no shadow of turning. <laughs> there's no shadow of turning. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. There's no mistakes. There's no shadow of turning. God don't have to come back and rewrite the Bible. God don't have to come back and say, I made a mistake. Never now and forever. God never made a mistake. He's all righteous. He's all holy. He didn't make a mistake. Never. And Jesus didn't either. Come on. Can you say me? Amen. Jesus never made a mistake. Never. Hallelujah. Live this life. Bible said he was tempted in all parts like his will. Right. Yet without sin. Yet without sin. Yet. And he said, put off the old man as we go. As we go each day. Paul said, I die daily. Quit letting yourself get away. Kill it. Kill it by telling it no. That's right. Put it to death. Sentence it to death by saying, I am not going to say that. I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm not going to do that. In Jesus' name. By his strength. That's right. I stand on this word. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank God. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. That's why he said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow yes. me. Yes. Take off the old man, put on the new man, which after God is created. See, we're that recreation of God. <laughs> and when you grow in God, you grow like to be like Jesus. When you grow, you grow to be like him. Yes. We come into perfection. <laughs> yes, Lord. We grow into his stature. Well, the Bible's scripture's full of it. He said, he said in the church, first apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. For the reason of it was for the perfecting of the saints. 
That's the reason that we might be perfected. I'm brought into perfection. The apostle prophet, just like I've told you many times, you got the uh, carpenter, you got the electrician, the plumber, you got the brick mason. All these is to build a house. Not one of them builds a house. All of them builds a house. Come on. All of them perfects that house That's where right. it's livable. Gets yeah. you warm in the winter, cool in the summer. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yes. Running water to take a bath. Electricity to, to run your lights in your refrigerator. Yes. The brick to keep the storm off of you. To keep the rain off of you. To keep your family warm and cool. They all are there in that company. And you know what? The brick mason don't get the glory. The electrician don't get the glory. The company gets the glory. You had still built this house, but you know you had to have somebody to build it. Yes. You had still had crafts. Just like we say, God built this house. Here, yeah, God had apostles, prophets. God perfect. Yes, God did perfect it, but He had apostles, prophets, man, pastors, and teachers that He anointed That's to right. perfect That's to build right. His right. Right. house in His kingdom. Right. Yeah. But you know that part, and we've got a lot away from right. that it's not uh, honored much anymore. True. But God still set it up. Like yes. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all, it brings us into unity. Yes. And my God, don't we need unity? Yes. Look at the churches. Look Lord, at have mercy. the brethren. You still have a revival. Everybody come. Yeah. Okay. That's the truth. That's right. Everybody show. Even the... I remember the day that even the Baptist folks come. Everybody. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody showed up. Sure did. That is the truth. But yep. now, even the ones supposed to believe in that, they're divided. Everybody's got their own thing, their own, their own show. And it looks like they're scared they're going to lose something. That's right. Uh -huh. if, they, if they come in unity. Yep. In fact, right. that's the only way you're going to gain it. That's according right. to the scripture. That's yeah, what he said. Yeah. You don't make yourself apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher over your flock and bring him into perfection. That ain't where God landed and it won't happen. And you know what's going to happen in the end? The blind lead the blind. They both fall in the ditch and they'll be lost. Yes, They will be lost, lost, lost. All because that man took it on his own Dismiss the word of God. Let me tell you, all of the preachers to this area has to dismiss the word of God because they've all heard it. That's right. That's right. They have to dismiss the plan of God. They've done away with the plan of God. God said through Paul, He said it in the church, first apostle, prophets, David, pastor, teachers. And that's the way they're perfect. For the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Do we all come into unity when God gets through with this thing? That's why I'm telling you, hear me good. That's why God, he ain't that God just wants to raise up a new crop. He's got no other choice. That's right. They have rebelled and refused for what he's going to do. That's right. The one that's stuck in here will be a part of The one that's stuck in here and loved the word and stayed in it and fought will be a part of it. Jesus. But he's going to raise up a new crop and they're going to come in. Yeah, I believe it. And their suffering's going to be free. I believe it. Yeah, amen. But when men and preachers, and you know they've got to do this you, to keep on going in the direction, they have dismissed the word of God. Yes. That's right. Yeah. For their own personal yes. gain. Yes, sir. I believe that. some kind that. of way. They dismiss God's holy sanctified, pure word yes. that nothing else will work but it. Nothing else. Nothing else. It, God planned this thing out. Just like he said, Jesus was crucified before the foundation 
of the world. For man was even created. Jesus had done died on the cross in God's foreknowledge. So you can't get ahead of God, man. What's the little man? What's the little man going to step out here and make his own way and own plans without following God's word? Mm. Mm. Can't not do it. People are going to be lost. They're going to die. They're already. Those that's been separated from the truth have already. And you know they have. They yes. already did. Yes. There's already death, just like the children of Israel. Yes. They died in the wilderness. Yes. Uh, Joshua and Caleb yes. was the only two out of three and a half million. But he raised up that new crop. Yes, sir. And they went in. People have dismissed the word of God. God. And there's no way you can make it. God is a merciful God. I pray. That God will reach out somehow in mercy and touch them all. Yes, Jesus. All I'm doing is preaching you what the Word says. That's right. I've got to tell you what the Word says because God stands with this. That's right. And I know He still wants us to have a merciful heart. Yeah. Yes. He still wants us to pray, God, please, somehow. Yes. Somehow. I love the people. I love the preachers. Yeah. They love me, but they just don't love what I preach. That's right. That's the truth. Man, they love me to death. They just want to hug me when they see me. But they don't love what I preach. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. They don't want to That's be no true. part of this Bible. I, I, I stay in the Bible. That's right. That's right. Be straight for them. <laughs> A lot of people love me. I can feel the love coming from them. But they just don't love what I preach. That's right. right. The truth. Yeah. Amen. The Bible said you should know the truth. Yes. Truth shall make you free. Yes, right. It's the word. God's going to finish this thing up and He's going to finish it. Right. <laughs> finish it right. Yes, sir. That's right. Did you believe that? Yes, I believe it. There's going to be a mass gathering in. Yes, there is. In these last days. I believe it. Yeah. There's going to be a mass gathering in. So, a new crop. I believe it. A new crop. Yes. It's going to be raised up. And they're going to surpass mamas and daddies. Yes. They're going to surpass. Amen. They're going to come on in and possess. Yes, take it. And do you know? Some of you know. In the seventy, when God raised up that new crop, the new crop went through hell. Sure enough. Moms and daddies would rather the children go to hell than come to church here. God. They fought it with everything they had. Mm. Yes. They fought it with everything they had. Yeah. But they still come in here under threat. And that's the truth. The way it is. Amen. The, there's persecution brings revival. And revival brings persecution. Right. Mm-hmm. It's always, the truth has always been fought. It's always been fought. Always. Paul lost his head. Peter was crucified upside down. James was beat to death. On and on. Stephen's was stoned to death. Jeremiah was sold in a sew up to his neck. Isaiah was sawed in two with a saw. Put him up a hollow log and sawed the log and him both returned. And he was sold in the lion's den, but he was delivered. Not everybody was delivered. Right. But God delivered those he wanted to. That's right. Some, he gets glory out of being willing to die without change. Thank you. Oh, God. Thank you. And if that's what glorifies God. Lord, and I believe this. I believe this. If God chooses us to go the way of the, to be mortared for Him, I believe He'll give you grace Amen. to stand up at that day and that time and say, "I refuse to deny my Lord." Hallelujah! I believe that. I believe God will give you grace to say, "No, I refuse to deny Jesus." Can you see me? Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. 
Just lift your hands and praise and stand on your feet. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Tell him you love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell Jesus you love him. Wonderful statement. Come on and tell the Lord you love him. Hallelujah. Tell him you appreciate him. Yes, hallelujah. Hey. Oh, I yes, Jesus. Lord, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was tell Jesus all of my trouble. Hallelujah. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help. Jesus will help me. Jesus alone. Stress, he kindly will help me. Jesus will help me. Oh, Jesus, along. Thank you, Jesus. He's a savior today. Yes. And he's a healer. Oh, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Come on. Can you say amen? Oh, Hallelujah. Praise God. The greatest thing you could ever do. Thank God is to be born again. Nothing in life. This side of heaven. Praise God. Could match being born again. God giving you a new life. Breaking the yokes of sin and the chains of darkness. Giving you peace within your heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're glad you came today. Jesus is still in the healing and the saving business. Praise God. And we're coming into a time that we're going to see that there's nothing too hot. The Lord. God's going to manifest Himself. The revelation of Himself is deliverance and healing to the sick and salvation to the lost. That's the revelation. That's the revealing of Jesus to the world. He's revealed His soul, whole self. Salvation, healing, and deliverance. Giving me in peace in their hearts where Satan has robbed them of their peace and their joy. Praise God. That's the revelation of Jesus to the world. It's for people to be brought out of darkness, transferred out of darkness to the marvelous light. Being healed of their diseases. Praise God. The blind seeing the lame walking. The deaf hearing. The dead being raised up. God manifesting himself. His power. His glory. Praise God. Revealing himself. And what he come to do. This is what Jesus come to do. David spoke of it before. 
Jesus is even born. Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all of thy iniquities and heaveth all of thy diseases. That's what Jesus come to do. He come to redeem us Amen. from our sins and the, and the results of sins, which is sickness. That's right. That's right. He come to redeem us from the curse. Curse of what sin does and sin itself. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Wave your hands to the Lord. Tell him you love him today. Oh, love you. Oh, thank Jesus. God. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I was planning on preaching on charity, but the Lord took me in a little different way. Praise God today. Blessed be his name. He knows what he knows more than what I know. That's right. <laughs> he knows more than what I know. Praise God. God bless you. We're going to change the order.